Well, exciting day in Tiger Stadium. Um, you know, our guys uh, wanted this opportunity. Uh, they saw this as a privilege to play in this stadium uh, and really wanted uh, this opportunity. And um, obviously the last three quarters um, played great football. Um, and, and that's, look, at the end of the day, um, when, when you have a, a top team coming in, um, that's why you come to LSU. And, and our best players played their best. And we needed that. Uh, our defense played great in the second half, obviously, against, uh, as you saw, a very potent offense. Uh, as our guys got their cleats in the ground, uh, they played much better. Um, their eye discipline was great in the second half. Holding them to, I don't know, under 120 yards rushing is uh, is a great feat for um, you know any defense going against um, you know what uh, what they do at, at, at uh, Mississippi. Uh, you know the quarterback was 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 excellent again. Uh, back to back weeks leading the offense, he was the catalyst for us, making quick decisions. Um, he was assertive, aggressive. Um, ran the ball. The offensive line was outstanding, uh, as you know. Really put the game away at the end, and we got stronger. I mean, we exerted our will against our opponent, which is part of what we're building here. Is that we want a you know, a dominant mindset amongst our group that, you know, come the second half, um, we want to be able to run the ball effectively um, and, and control our opponent uh, and move them against his will. And I thought we did that. So great victory. Um, excited for our guys. We got some time off, which we need. And um, we'll get a chance to um, get on the road recruiting and um, get ready for our next opponent. And um, give these guys a little time off. So with that, we'll open up the questions. Yeah, question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you, please. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, was Jaden coaching the cameras back here? Straight ahead. Oh, yes. Uh, was Jaden expected to be that much of a run game? And, and what kind of, like you said, flex is that for you guys to be able to continue to do that and run downhill in the second half? Yeah, so the, the structure of their defense is, um, you know, a, a, a three down with six defensive backs. And when they chose to keep them back, in coverage, um, he was in a zone read game option where he could throw it or run it, and um, he was he was on his game tonight. Uh, when he had three deep safeties, he was uh, he was reading it out and, and keeping it. Uh, when the safeties were down, the ball was coming out uh, on RPOs. Um, he was really good tonight reading it out. You, know, you obviously took a big risk coming down here to take this job. I mean, I know it's. Mid-season, but is there any validation you get in a win like this in Tiger Stadium that you know you do have this thing in the right direction? No, no, I, I think that's probably the, the <laughs> furthest thing from my mind. Um, I, I'm so excited for our players. Um, they look. They I used this analogy before. They jumped in 100% uh, um, with um, a whole new way of doing things uh, for me and. Um, I'm just so pleased that, that they're seeing um, positive results because of it. I think that that's what I'm, I'm most excited about. Hey, Coach. Uh, oh, over here. Yes. Uh, with the defense, what are some of the adjustments you guys made in that second half? Because you guys really shut them down. I can't give you all of those. They're secrets. <laughs> um, I really would like to tell you um, there were a lot, but I think we just got a little bit more aggressive uh, in talking to Matt at halftime. Uh, sometimes we, we we tend to you know cover up some some things that we feel like are um, weaknesses and uh, they're not really that weak uh, and we just kind of said let's go play um, and probably a little bit more aggressive maybe in the second half and and, and just let the guys play. Yeah, hey coach, right here. Um, Harold Perkins was all over the, the field tonight, really getting into Jackson Dart's face a lot. Just can you speak to his performance and just kind of how important he was to executing the, you know, the defensive game plan in the second half? He was good. You know, he's active. As you saw, we, you know, it's it's hard to get him on the field as much, but we felt like it was a, it, it was really important to get him out on the perimeter because he can run things down and he's a very good pass rusher. Um, he's a he's an exceptional player. I think everybody knows that. Um, but within our structure. Um, some guys lose some playing time because of it, and some really good players lose some playing time. Um, he's a really good player, and he impacts our defense, no doubt. 
uh, Coach, late in the third quarter, the Micah Baskerville pressure and the Joe Fouché interception in the end zone, or what did that mean in the overall game? Because they didn't sniff the end zone again. After that. <laughs> yeah, the momentum really shifted there. You know, the, the interception was probably the biggest play um, because they were threatening to score in that situation. We felt like, okay, that was the first time where we got any extension in the game from them because it was score, score, score. That was probably the, the one big play in the game that gave us the ability to, to you know, obviously pull away a little bit from. So that was a huge play. And, you know, the pressure obviously had a lot to do with that. So the pressure, he puts it up, um, and we were able to get the big interception. Hey, Brian, it looked like you did, gave him a hug after the game right before the end. I'm a big hugger. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's well, well, why. Uh, like, well, I mean, and what sort of have you seen from him the last couple of weeks? You know, this was a big game uh, in, in a lot of ways because it was th this needed to be that, um, you know, we're reaching that level of consistency <laughs> and performance. And um, I, I, think, you know, I think we both knew that if he was able to solidify another performance of similar um, quality, that we were off and running. And I think we both looked at each other and said, all right, let's go. Uh, it's time. And I think we both felt the same way that he's in a very good place uh, where he can run this offense now and he feels very comfortable with it. And he's ready to do really good things for us. Huh. At halftime, was the message to the team, let's clean up penalties, stop hurting ourselves, or we'll, we'll be fine. I did kind of tell him that the, the, the first thing was we're going to get the ball back. And um, last couple of weeks, I've deferred to the second half. and. Um, I said, if we if we have a good drive here, um, you know, we're we're going to set the tone. But um, we got to clean up a couple things, and, and we can't we can't keep shooting ourselves in the foot. We're in a good position here. We put ourselves back in it. Um, let's clean some of those things up, and that's kind of exactly what I talked about. Brian, over here. Uh your team this this season now has has bounced back from from two losses. Uh, got down by 14 today. Again, showed resilience. To what do you attribute this team's ability to continually get off the mat? Well, I knew the DNA in the team from the very beginning. You know, you go back all the way to Florida State where we were down, and we fought all the way back in that game. And you know, obviously, we didn't execute an extra point, but that team was poised to win that game. Um, so I kind of knew what we were about, you know, in that very first game that we played. And it's, it's been who they are from the very, very first time that I stepped um, on this campus with this team is that they had fight in them. Now, all the other things, consistency, execution, doing the little things uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, that's coming. And, and I've, I've said this on a number of occasions, we can't just rely on just being great fighters. Um, and we're not anymore. We're executing at a high level. We're exerting our will. Um, we're, our best players are now starting to play their best football. And they're playing, quite frankly, with a lot of confidence right now. And, and that's a pretty good thing. Coach, why, why do you think the last two weeks have happened? Kind of big picture. A couple of weeks ago, we were here, and it wasn't good. And since then, you've completely turned it around. If we were we weren't as far away in that Tennessee game as the score indicated. Um, look, I went for a lot of fourth down situations that exacerbated the score. Um, that could have been let's keep it close, and everybody went like, "Wow, they, they played them tough." That's we didn't play the game to keep it close. We played it to win it, but we didn't play very well that day. Tennessee was the better football team that day. But when we went through it again and we watched the tape and we looked at it, um, we felt like we were a better football team. So I know perceptually we got lit up and rightly so. We were poor that day. I coached poorly that day and we deserved everything that we got. But when we looked at it internally, we didn't think that we were far off. And I, I think we're starting to prove that. All right, Coach has time for two more. Coach, talk about uh, the, the offensive line. The defensive line before the season had all the press, you know, and how dominant they were going to be. 
and the offensive line was a question, and yet they've had to have, what, six different starting offensive lines? Yes. And they are just looking so impressive with even the young talent that you have. You know, Two true about Brad Davis's tackle. job. Yeah, Brad's doing an incredible job. It's been a, you know, a revolving uh, cycle of players in and out of the lineup. Um, the two freshmen have been outstanding for us. Um, I, I just can't say enough about the resiliency and the toughness and the mindset. Look, I mean, we ended the game uh, against Mississippi today with that five minute drive. The game ended with them knowing that we were gonna run the ball at them and we did that for five minutes. And that is a mindset um, that we wanted to build and Brad's done a great job with that. One more, Coach. Hey Coach. Uh, Coach, Kayshawn seems to be getting in a groove of more targets, uh, some more production. Is that definitely a key in the last couple weeks? Yeah, I think his targets are up. I, I think it's, he, he's just, I think he's feeling comfortable with his role and his leadership role. We've elevated his leadership role and he's he's been outstanding. He grabbed me on the sideline and said, Coach, don't, don't forget the first things that you have to say when you go in the locker room. He's even like scripting my stuff now. And, uh, I was like, oh, thanks, Kishon, I appreciate it. I couldn't find you the first week. Now you're running the show. Um, but that's what I love about him. He's, he's been so engaged, um, so part of what we're doing. And we're better because of it. And, and you can see when he touches the football, he's electric. And um, we're here because our best players are playing their best football. What were the first things you were to say? What were the first things you were to say? Oh, I'm sorry. He said, make sure you, you mention the defense and how they shut down that running game. I said, all right. He's talking about the defense. <laughs> <laughs>